Hi, this is B. So I'm going to nerd out for a minute. So as I'm making, I'm making these bottles right here, and as I'm making these, I realize that I should probably share something. And so there'll be, I don't know what we're going to do more moving forward. I am going to create everything in the book, but it seems to me that it's more authentic and sincere to create and share with you like the little Viking things and some other things when they come up. Um, because those are inspired things versus, yes, my other stuff is inspired. And if you tell me, well, you have to create every single video in the book, that seems, that is part of my job. That's not necessarily my inspiration. So, but these little videos I want to share with you as well. So soap dough, first of all, you want to start with a really good quality soap dough. And you can tell the quality based on how it behaves. And so when it does this and you can see it and I, I share videos like this quite often at least I used to on YouTube but I don't think people really grasp what I'm trying to convey and you see how it's kind of sticky there's a little bit of a sheen to it well there's another thing that happens the more I work with it right here if you can see that the stickier it becomes so I'm not saying don't work with it like that. Now I'll show you something else too. Okay, so my hands look pretty clean. They're pretty dry. My hands are generally dry anyway. I live in a dry climate, but my person is just, my hands aren't, you know, some people have like sweatier hands. My hands aren't like that. My hands are pretty dry. So if I put a little water on them, and I mean very little, like they're now just moist, and then I do this, you start to see what I'm seeing, maybe. And then the more I work with it, the stickier it starts to get. I don't know if I'm conveying that correctly or if I even need to. It's not the quality of the dough. The dough behaves based on my hands, the warmth of my hands. It also behaves based on how much moisture I have in my hands. So if you're working with a soap dough, like for this, for example, you can see how rough it is right here. It started to get wet and then I started to relift things off of it. So I leave it to dry just a, just a bit, just maybe five minutes maybe. And then I go back and roll over it until I, and when every time you roll over it like this, you're gonna start opening that soap dough up and it'll become sticky. So I can only do it a couple times, right? So we'll leave that for a second. Now here's one that's a little drier. And I roll over that again and smooth it out. There, and it starts to take on a, a, a more shiny quality to it. It's like it's getting packed in there. We'll do this one too. So if you're making things, you're making your creations and you look at it and you go, oh, that looks pretty lumpy, it's not smooth. And just leave it for a minute, not to dry or even cure completely. Just dry just enough so that surface starts to get firm. There, now see, I'm starting to work it too much because I got a crack right there. I don't know if you can see that crack. So you give it a little moisture so that it coax it into the direction that you want it to go. Right? I'm not going to leave these sitting up, by the way, on the soap. They're going to sit over on the side. So, so I wanted to show you how I made this bottle. So there's two ways to make this bottle I discovered. And one is we're going to start with the cone. Okay, there's a cone, bam, right? It's like clay, but unlike clay, we have, well, clay has a limited amount of time to work with it too. We have a kind of a limited amount of time to work with it. So we want the bottom to be a little bit rounder, right? And the other thing too, I noticed like, I'm, I'm watching a, a movie on taxidermy and how deep down the rabbit hole they are and how they become artists in their art form. And 
they study their animals all the time and whatever we want to create in soap we have to study it too so that you don't have to keep referencing things you get that idea in your mind and then it'll just start to appear it starts to appear and you go oh that's not right and that's right that's more right that's more right and that's more right like the bo like bottles I used to collect antique bottles for a long time I got tired of dusting everything so I don't collect them anymore but I have an idea what I want it to look like like what would a bottle in an apothecary look like what would an alchemist bottle look like it looked maybe purple it's just the color pattern I want for the top of my soap but I think it would be like a f sort of an odd flask okay so you can see that there's one version I'm gonna leave that because I want to cut that top off flush and then I'm gonna put a cork in it like that okay so here's the ball version Let's see So open it up this way so it, you know you have the sticky soap dough right there and then just stick it on right it's still a bit shiny there good oops I have soap dough on there and so the other thing that's weird is that when you get your hands wet maybe just a little bit moist and you touch soap dough it first starts to be very slippery and then it starts to come around. And, and so when I'm doing this, I can feel like it feels like it's gonna collapse in here. So I'm not sure how to explain that. It feels sort of hollow almost. So I just want to, so there's that version so I am gonna I'm gonna leave it because if I mess with it anymore I'm gonna start causing myself more problems than more more harm than good at this point because it um, because it's gonna stick so what I do is set that aside and then go back to another one that I have and roll it out again so I have like four I just go by the time I set the one down and I go all the way to four and come back around, usually these are pretty, pretty dry enough to work. And if not, then I go do something else and I come back to it or start another project. So I don't know if you can see that shine on there like that. And the finger is beautiful for this technique completely to smooth it out so that it becomes really shiny like well like a jar there so I'm gonna call that guy done well as far as that technique goes and then I have this soap dough this little piece of soap dough I've been letting set and it's been out in the air all day and I keep being able to revive it and it's very very firm again a little cone shape which is one of my favorite shapes and it it seems to be the, the precursor to everything. So I'm making a cork-like top like that. Don't need it to go that deep in. I want it to be like a little more narrow. You see that? Yeah. Okay. So I was making that that um, Viking video the other day, and I realized most of the time I was I had to edit it. it took me like an hour or two hours to edit because I was mostly off the camera and I realized I shouldn't do those things when I'm super tired so I just cracked it right here no worries right don't worry about that right now remember just keep moving forward okay stick that in there there's a little crack add a little water smooth it down smooth it down and, and soap dough is like loves to stick to itself and it's sort of wonky I kind of want it to be like genie bottle a little bit there you go and there's that so um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that 
my goal is, you know, I've always hesitated signing up for things that are reoccurring because I felt like people don't have my work ethic and so they promise me things and then they never live up to them. And that's my story. I once said in a workshop when I was when they asked me to do a trust fall onto concrete. And I saw the people in the group and I said, you know, I have trust issues, but you guys don't look very strong. And they did not like that. And they basically judged me and told me I was a failure in my self-help work because I didn't let them, I didn't stand on the top of an eight foot ladder and fall back on them. But all the ways that I tried to build trust with them, they did not want to build trust with me back. And that was simple things like a answering questions, like answering real questions. And some of the things they were saying in class were, were like, oh yeah, um, the guy that started the class says that he swam here in a pot of dolphins th through space. And so my question was, is that a metaphor or are you seriously telling me that, that I'm supposed to believe that? We'll answer that at the end. We'll answer that at the end. So five days of sitting for 10 hours in a day in class and driving two hours each way to get to that class, I was done. I'm like, I paid for this class. I'd like some of my answers. And so as it turned out, I was right. And it wasn't about being right or wrong. It was about following me, following what I understood the world to be and having self-evident truth. And the um, moral of that story is that, so I don't sign up for a lot of things because I don't think other people have the same work ethic that I do. So I try to make fair deals. If they have a book and they wanna sell me the book, I'm interested in that, I will exchange currency for the book. But I don't do it based on future work. I do it based on work that I'm doing or work they're doing. And so when I started the Patreon account, I didn't want, I wanted to say, I've written five books, I'm good for it, I, I want to continue this and I think it'll be a fun endeavor and I think that we're all going to get something out of it and maybe make a sort of a, a true soap coalition where we all kind of get along and support each other and encourage each other and I can teach you what I know and you can take some of that and go in all your directions that you want to go and that's really why I started this. And so I really appreciate that you're trusting me to give you content. And so this is a work in progress and I want to take as much feedback as I can from everybody and move forward with it. Um, I'm not a selfish person and I don't even want to be that kind of person in the world. And um, I, I might have to create some boundaries in the future where I maybe put, um, don't do videos quite as frequently as I've been doing now and then but I, I would like to keep up the pace as long as I can keep it up so that I can pour my ideas out to you and then you can do other things with them. And I also wanna keep doing the collaborations. We've done one so far. And I think those collaborations are, there's value in that, not just for the account, but for, um, for supporting you to move your fingers in a way so that you can create more ideas and then start to trust yourself to create those ideas um, and then have something to show for that that's like truly yours. So anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback on my thoughts and tell me what you think and if it is so far, if it's been worth signing up for the Patreon account and um, uh, I, I, I don't know, I guess, I guess that's it, you know, like if you think or if you want to see something else that I haven't offered yet. So again, work in progress, trying to, trying to make all this. And the other question I have for you, everybody, is have you watched all the videos that I've put up so far? Like, let me know in the comments who's watched all the videos. And um, because here's my other hope, too, is that that you might watch a video and not necessarily care about, like, making a little Viking. <laughs> Those guys were funny to me. Um, but you learn some, some things about soap dough that you didn't know before. 
just by watching me. And so that's also important to me. So anyway, that's it. I don't want this to go too terribly long. Um, so tell me what you think. Okay.